Hello, my dear. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. So I don't, I do so many readings, I'm not sure I've read for you before, so I always like to give a little speech. I see, hear, feel, sense, know. They talk to me, but they also show me pictures. I call it spiritual charades. And I try to describe the picture to the best of my ability for you. They never waste a message. So there's, there's always something in it. There's always a reason for what they show. Um, you just, if you, <laughs> I don't know why I always mutter. So if you don't understand it now, keep it in mind because you'll either remember it later, see it later, or somebody else can validate it for you later and go, oh, I know what that means. And um, they don't always tell us what we uh, want to know. They tell us what we need to know. It's their show. I let them run the show. It's not an exact science. Sometimes you got to think outside the box. So... Um, they will not give me all the details. They'll give me just enough because the detail, details are none of my business or anybody else's. They'll give me enough so you know what they're talking about. I let them do whatever they feel like they think is best. So far, so good. So let's see what he's got. Let's see what he's got to say. Hey, he, he just comes in here and just he's standing like more than arm's length away. And he's standing pretty much the same as he is in the picture you saw. And he um, he says he's he's on my right side. Some of these cameras make me look make it look backwards. Um, Like, I can't quite touch him. He says he's like this with you. That he's he's right there. He's not, um, oh, he's close enough, though. They make my head itch like I have head lice when I get real close. Um, I don't know why we haven't fixed that yet. <laughs> Quit it. At least I know they're close. Anyway, he's like that with you. It's like he's there keeping an eye on you, or well, not really keeping an eye on you, but he, he's there. He's there, but he's staying back a little bit. He's not trying to, like, roam around, interfere with your life, or which they really can't because we have free will choice, and nobody can override our free will choice. So... standing there. Okay, then he, he, now he just walked up behind me and he leans over my head and he goes, <laughs> being funny, he goes, do you think he can see that? And I said, mm, probably not. Now sometimes, this camera stinks, but when we do paranormal stuff, sometimes, well, we use cameras a lot and when we do paranormal investigations. And we'll catch things in the camera that we didn't see with our naked eye. So you could possibly see some wavy lines here. I don't think anybody's caught it on this camera yet because, I, like I said, my camera stinks. The best I got right now for this. So, or you could see out here, out here somewhere, you can see wavy, different than the other way, other. I don't know if I had too much coffee or not enough. Anyway. He says. He says you've been feeling sad. He says you've been feeling sad. A little bit confused about where your life is going. Kind of like, not really like, not really like your 
jittery and about it, but more like maybe pondering would be the word to use. Kind of just like, you know, where is this shit going? Um, where am I going? Not sure which way to go right now, but it's not like you're terribly upset about it. At least that's the way he's showing it. But that this is just something that you, that you keep thinking about a lot lately. He says one foot in front of the other. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Don't look right. Don't look left. Just keep plugging. I mean, it's like it's almost deliberate steps. And then he's showing a door in front of you. And it's right smack dab in front of you. So a lot of times they'll show me somebody's path. And they might show me like a little path where you go out and come back in, you know, like you veered off, came back on, but he's, he's not showing it that way. He's, he's showing a door right smack in front of you and it's cracked open a little bit. It's not open, but you're not quite there. It's not going to slam shut on you. I feel like it's it's like with your career job wise. Um, he's very he's very mellow. He's very um, kind of quiet. It's it's like you're almost to that door. And you've got your hand up to knock on it, even though it's cracked open. But you're just a little ways away from it. So kind of open your eyes a little bit and look around you. And he said, don't, don't go right, don't go left. It's right smack in front of you. So there's something maybe you haven't quite seen it yet, realized it yet. Um, he says, it will be good. There will be people there that you need to meet. So there's going to be some new people there. That are going to take you past the door and further up on your path. So don't discount anybody that happens to pop in front of you, somebody new. Kind of uh, maybe give them a chance or maybe um, give them a, hey, how you doing? And... See what they've got to offer because seriously, your loved ones, your guides, your angels, they can seriously put these people in your path. You can tell, tell them, nope, I don't want that shit. That's your free will choice. I, I always tell people they can bring you the most, the gorgeous, richest man in the world. And you can pick the guy that drives a trash truck. Nothing wrong with driving a trash truck, just that you can say no to all of the riches. He says that's not what riches are about. And he's absolutely, absolutely right. All right, so he pulled his eyes to my feather. Ah! And he said, watch for those. And when I tell people about feathers, and feathers, you know, butterflies, cardinals, those are all universal signs that pretty much everybody's becoming aware of. But the feathers will be like in unique places. Um, I walked through my dining room one day and all of a sudden I had a feather stuck in my slipper. Where would it come from? You know, that kind of thing. Or I might get out of my vehicle and start walking down the sidewalk and right smack in the middle of the sidewalk is one single feather. It's just those unique, of course birds drop them, but still it's that unique kind of you sit under a tree under a bird's nest, that doesn't count. Anyway, watch for the feathers. When you get those, tell him, hey, bud, thanks a lot. Love you. 
Love you, man. Um, acknowledge him, validate him, let him know that you know that's him. And if you want more, ask him to bring you more. And he'll start, once you start realizing there's some signs coming, then you'll get more stuff and you'll realize those are actually messages or kind of knocks, hey, how you doing? Knocks on your door from heaven. Ooh, I kind of like that. I like that he said that. And he's up there with a grandpa, a grandpa figure. And I always say grandpa figure because it does not have to be a blood relative. And I know that sounds like it's maybe vague or like I'm stretching it, but I'm not. Your neighbor next door can feel more like a grandfather to you than your grandfather who lives clear across the country. That feeling, that relationship. Grandfather who appears to be shorter than him, kind of a little man, very, um, very knowing. Is knowing the word I want to use? A very knowing man. Somebody that your friend admired. That's a, Honors, he honors his grandfather, his grandfather anyway. He said he knew it was time, the grandfather did. He was there to get him. He seems something about his eyes, his eyes, his eyes lost track what he was supposed to be doing. I don't know for sure what that means. Like when he left, his eyes lost track of things around him. But, and I don't know how he passed, but let's say somebody's in a car wreck and right before the moment of impact, they actually, you actually leave your body. You don't your soul is not traumatized by physical pain because the soul is not the physical body. That's something we leave here. It's just a shell. It's just something that our soul and spirit resides in while we're here. He said, so no. He did not, he did not have to experience that. His body did. That was left here. That was just his shell. There's an elderly woman walking up behind him now. And I think he feels like you need to know that he's in a safe place. And she's like a grandmother type figure, but she looks she doesn't look like the grandfather, so I don't know if she's with that grandfather or if she's just another part of his family in a different way. Like, same thing, grandmother type. He just feels so safe and secure and sure of himself. Remember the things we used to talk about in private. Remember the dreams we had. Remember the fun we had, but remember the things we used to talk about in private. You can still talk to me about it now. And I will promise you a thousand percent they can hear you and they can see you. So talk away and whatever he was now he's making it feel like, I mean, like you guys were like brothers, like 
really close, like he's kind of leaning in. So that close connection that you had, the person that you could confide in, you still can. Talk to him, confide in him. You don't even have to say it out loud. We talk telepathically. He says, pour out your troubles. Sit and have a Corona with me. Ha ha ha. <laughs> He's laughing. With a little salt and lime. Well, the salt doesn't usually go with Corona, but he said with a little salt and lime. You guys drink tequila? Shooting tequila? How about salt and lime? Um, okay, so I always say, if Uncle Joe didn't have a pot to piss in, don't, and he leaves, don't ask him for advice on your financial stuff. So what was your friend really good at with you? Sitting there listening to you, um, working things out in your heads together solving problems together, or just somebody to lean on and an ear to listen to you. Whatever he was good at for you, he still can be. So talk to him. Tell him what it is you need that he would be good at. And then just, it won't happen right that second, probably. And then just wait and see what all of a sudden appears in front of you out of the blue or the phone call you get, or the email you get. He says he knows your heart. Don't be a loner. I just want to jump up and down and clap his hands. And get grief, I'm shaking the whole table. <laughs> Maybe I need to lose weight. He says, you need, you need to pep up the vibe. Get the vibe, V-I-B-E, get the vibe going. Turn up the music. Gotta make it bouncy, vibey music. Vibey music. Okay, he's putting... <laughs> I don't know what this means. He's putting a tiara on your head, not a king's crown, but a tiara, like a queen would wear. He says you look really cute with that. So you could possibly feel like there's something sitting on your head like a tiara would feel. He says, yep, you will, you will. And it, and it usually doesn't feel real strong, like a real one sitting on there, but you'll feel that just... You know, you know what a tear looks like and how it sits on a head. He's showing the cones on the side. Okay, usually tiaras have little, what we call cones, you know, that kind of stick in your hair to kind of help hold it on there. So I don't know if you're going to feel that thing slide down your head. Sometimes if you don't poke them, turn them in the right angle, they poke your head. So I don't know. I don't know where he's going with these little, these little plastic cones that might be attached to it. Or maybe you guys did this one night. You're a king in my book. I'm so blessed to have had you for a friend. They make my head itch. Once again, he's wanting you to stir that energy up. You need to raise your vibration. You need to get the vibes going. He's kind of stirring the pot, kind of dance around. He says, you've got to stir that vibration up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Dance around the room. He wants you to go open the curtains. Let the sun shine in. Look outside at the rest of the world. Oh, and then he, he goes and he sticks face right up to the window 
and he says, actually, look outside. Look at the blades of grass. Look at the leaves on the trees. Look at the birds sitting in the tree. Look at the people walking down the sidewalk. Look at the cars on the street. Look at the clouds. He's trying to get you to look at more than, you know, just, just, I understand what he's talking about. My birds are singing outside right now. Um, he wants you to actually look at a blade of grass. Um, look at a cloud. We take all that for granted. We worry too much about the concrete sidewalks and the, con and the you know, the concrete buildings. Well, I know they're not all concrete, but you know what I'm saying? We worry too much about work and business and all that stuff. And we forget about the free stuff out there, the real stuff, which is nature. I don't know why he's going like this. I've seen him do that before, but I don't I don't know what he wants with it. Usually they're talking about money when they do that, but he's not saying why he's doing that. And I won't I won't try to make anything fit. But I'll tell you whatever he says. It either fits or it doesn't. can be happy if you want to make your mind up. I don't know where you, <laughs> I don't, I have no clue where you live because I don't creep anybody's Facebook page before I do readings because it just, it messes up my mind. My mind's already a mess. But he's showing you like going out in the middle of the street and dancing and I've, I've seen videos like in Spain and and all over where they're, where they're literally quarantined and cannot come out of their buildings. And they've got, there'll be like a single guy out there. Oh, the guy was in a gorilla suit. And he had these big speakers and stuff. I don't know how he got away with that. He must have permission. And he was playing music and everybody's on the balconies dancing and enjoying it. Um, he's like wanting me to go out in the middle of the street. Like like the guy that I saw, and just dance. I, I tell my grandson, I came, out, I came out of a restaurant, and I'm dancing across the park. And he goes, really, Grandma? And I said, do you think I give a shit about what those people looking out the window think? I'm enjoying it. You can dance anywhere you want to. So there's something in that that he's trying to get across to you. You know, it's like nobody's watching. Because you worry about too, you worry about other people's judgment too much. I'm trying to ask you something. Hang on. So I don't think he's going to really give you any signs like tapping on something or, and I ask him, I ask mine not to do the spooky stuff because then people think their house is haunted or they think they have a boogeyman in the house breaking in. So he came up behind you, do it again, kind of came up behind you and he went, so if, when you feel when you feel, because you will, it's not going to be like the wind blowing and you feel it all on your backside. You're going to feel like in one, one area, it'll be like a rush, like a poof of, of air, like somebody took a air, air can, you know how they call it, and went shh, on the back of your head. And it won't be, it probably, probably won't be very strong. So once again, Validating, acknowledge him, telling, telling, hey, bet I miss you. Thanks for stopping by. 
he says to ask him to show you some signs. He wants you to realize the signs. He doesn't want me to tell you all of them. So when you ask him and give him permission, tell him, hey, I want you around, bud. Hey, pop in, pop in, check on me, chat with me. Um, literally tell him that. You're not holding him here. He can go anywhere he wants to. And uh, ask him for some signs. And then give it just a few minutes or maybe maybe a few hours or something. And something will pop up that reminds you of him. Maybe a song. It, you may hear his name. Um, maybe his favorite food will pop up on TV. I mean, it'll be something that will be where all of a sudden you'll go, you'll think of him, and then you go, there's my sign, there's my sign, that he heard me. He wants you to realize, instead of me telling you, all of them. And now he's like, bounce, bounce, bounce. He says he's bouncing around to several places. But he feels, he feels content, he feels happy, he feels calm, he feels, um, peaceful, loving. He says, and a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm good. He says, I'm good. And I want you good. Allow me to help. And you do have to allow them. Um, my guides are always up there going, Honda. Why are you doing that again? Because I'm not allowing them to do, because I go, eh, no, I can do this myself. You have to allow them because we have free will choice that they cannot override. They'll keep knocking on us though until, until we get it. Oh, you're going to feel this too. I'm tapping my head and, and he's showing this spot right here. Probably won't hurt as much as that just did because I got fingernails. Lord, what am I going to do if I can't go get my fingernails done? <laughs> no quarantine. <laughs> I need my fingernails done. <laughs> oh my goodness, I have to laugh a little bit. I hope this finds you well. I hope everybody around you is well. I hope. The panic slows down and people can breathe again. This is this is all just crazy. Um, try to keep your calm. That's the best thing we can do is everybody try not to panic and go dance in the street. Raise your vibe. That will keep some of that crap away from you. The higher your vibe, the less chance you will get sick. He's going like this. He says, I'm done. He says, so no, we are all brothers. He says soulmates. So I don't know if he's actually a soulmate. I, I don't know if I get that feeling that you're actually soulmates. You can have several soulmates. Uh, that's not limited to one. That's a special connection. From, it's a special connection, which means people kind of travel in soul groups. He wants me to explain real quick. And I don't know if you believe in past lives, that we've been here before several times, but we tend to travel with the same soul group. And sometimes we're male, sometimes we're female, sometimes we're the husband, sometimes we're the wife, sometimes we're the child, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so you're traveling in his soul group. So it's not the last time you're going to see him. I'm hearing some music. I'm hearing drums. I'm hearing drums. Like, like he's playing a set of drums, but I don't. So I'm not sure what it is about the drums. Okay. He says. Ask me, ask me to show up. I'll do my best. 
you're not interfering with anything he's doing, he says. All right, much love to you, my dear. He's leaving. Know that he wants you happy, and he will help you, but you have to allow him to. Anyway, Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. Stay safe out there. Scary, scary times, but make the best of it and dance. See you later.